So, hey everybody, welcome to Car Stylus again. I have been recently playing around with, um, well really just getting back into using ZBrush. I've been using Maya for a while, just got, got back teaching a class in Shanghai using Maya for automotive design and uh, really trying to combine the, the two, that is Moto, I'm sorry, not Moto, but uh, Maya, ZBrush, and even Moto actually, uh, into workflow that is really advantageous for automotive designers. So uh, I've got this like really quick blob here. It's really nondescript and I'm using it as a starter. It's something that I did a while ago. It has terrible plan views and, and so on and so forth. But I began to play around with it and started to get uh, shapes that are more, uh, I think, dynamic. You know, I uh, probably started something like this. This was the, um, this is the one that evolved from that previous model that I showed you this one here. This one evolved from it. And it's really rough. It's actually decimated. I've already decimated it because I am going to retopologize it in Moto or Maya. Actually, I'm going to do it in Moto. In any case, you can see it's really rough. I didn't really take any time trying to do any surfacing, uh, smoothing out any surfacing in ZBrush here. Just kind of mobbing out shapes and forms and seeing where it takes me. And then I moved on. I'm like, you know, that's that's sort of okay, but you know, I it's not as dynamic enough, I don't think. So what I did was did another iteration. And this is the beauty of, I think, uh, ZBrush, just kind of hashing out uh, various iterations. So I went to this one. This one, this is even rougher than the previous one. You know, it's it's uh, just kind of pushing and pulling. I'm thinking, hey, you know, there's something to this. You know, you've got this like outer surface and then you've got this inner surface. You know, maybe these fenders hang off uh, of this core, this core shape here. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna pursue that. So what I've done was take take that, decimated it in here in ZBrush, and took it further. Or I'm beginning to take it further in Moto. So I've got this decimated model in Moto here, and the same can be done in Maya. But I've imported it in Moto, and what I've done was used it as a base to retope on top of. Now everybody knows how to retope. I think I've done a video on retopology in Maya or Moto before, but I'm pursuing various ways to approach it because as you know when you're retoping a surface uh, and you smooth it freeze it whatever you 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 do in your particular package in the particular package um, the surface actually shrinks below the target surface and this is the target surface and so I've been trying how what is the workflow what is the best workflow to to solve this challenge because you really want it as close to the target surface as possible. Moto offer really doesn't offer anything special, but what it does offer is the scope tools. The scope tools allow me to move it dynamically and get a, a better fit than probably Maya at this point at least. And what I've done was taken this, I have this particular surface and I changed the transparency down to let's say about 65%. And then um, I've got the surfaces really already here. And what I've done was start to create various pot body panels, not connecting them at all. As you can see, none of them are really connected and I've got a lot of holes here. But what is allowed me to do is to pick an element, let's say this front fender here, and I've got it in its own separate layer. And I can go ahead and pick that and smooth it you know and you can see that is way below the surface and this is what it's expected when you smooth the surface uh, after you retopologize it on the surface and this is an unfortunate thing however with moto i can go ahead and crease this fender line here 
and you can see it's creased right now. And now using the move to, and the move to is a sculpt to inside of Moto, I can now adjust my brush size here, here, and then now use the transparent uh, target model as reference and pull my surface to match the target surface. And I can do this in a much more elegant way that I can do in Maya. I can just sort of do this dynamically as you see me doing it here and just fit it and make sure I'm fitting it to that surface. So really, um, this is a very useful approach and I just thought I'd share it with you. I hope that you guys can take this further. Take this further, do what you, do, do what you have to do in order to make it work and I'll see you next time.